wrote something about um, how your professional decline is coming. And we realize how much of, of, of our lives is wrapped around our work. And you kind of illustrated this with a, with a great story about a guy that we, I guess, would all know on a plane. Can you, can you tell us the story? Yeah, I was listening. Well, I wasn't eavesdropping, but I was on a plane doing what I always did. I was a CEO for a long time running a think tank in Washington, D.C., and traveling around all the time and you know, doing all the, the traditional kind of business successful stuff. And I heard a couple behind me on a plane one night. It was a night flight from L.A. to Washington. And the, the husband, I could tell they were elderly. I could tell it was a man and a woman. And I assumed because of the conversation that they were married. The husband was telling his wife that he might as well be dead. That, that, that nobody appreciated him anymore. Nobody even remembered him anymore and just disconsolate. And anyway, so I just went over 20 minutes. About an hour later, we landed in Washington, D.C. and the lights went on. We all stood up and I turned around and it was one of the most successful men in the world. I thought to myself, man, I'm getting everything wrong. I'm a social scientist. You know, I, I teach happiness at Harvard University. I should know that this is, there's something going on here. Is it true? That if you have this much success, you can wind up that dissatisfied. Now, when in search to, of an answer, I did an eight-year research project, as a matter of fact, for my satisfaction. It was a, a it was like me search, not research. And, and I think I cracked the code. Here was my objective. What can we do to avoid that? And more importantly, what can we do at 25 or 45 or, or 65 to increase the odds of being happier than we were before at 75? And this book is The Seven Habits of the happiest people in old age and what they did earlier in life to get there. Hmm. Hey, you talk about one of the f foundational parts of this is the difference between fluid and crystallized intelligence. This is a pretty- Yeah, that's right. Yeah, can you kind yeah, of talk about right. that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So when you said that you know professional decline is coming sooner than we think, that's true. But it's also true that your greatest successes lie ahead. And the reason is because Early on, our successes come from what's called fluid intelligence. That's kind of your raw smarts and your ability to answer other people's questions with you know, sheer mental muscle and hard work. That actually increases in your ability through your 20s and 30s. That's why startup entrepreneurs tend to be quite young. But then it decreases all the way through your 40s and 50s. However, there's another kind of intelligence called your crystallized intelligence that's increasing in your 40s and increasing fast in your 50s and even your 60s and stay, can stay high in your 70s and 80s. That crystallized intelligence is your wisdom. It's your ability to tell a story that people can understand. It's your ability to, to teach. So your first intelligence is your Elon Musk intelligence. Your second intelligence is your master teacher, your Dalai Lama intelligence. And, and this is the most important thing. If you can get from one curve onto the other by changing your duties, changing your job, changing your ambitions, your happiest times are at the end of your life. The greatest success lies ahead. Yeah, you talk a lot, a lot in the book about this second curve concept, basically, um, where as your first, that first curve comes and we can't help but continue to chase it as we lose our abilities um, uh, slowly. And you might still be able to do a lot of the things you did before, but they become harder. Maybe you don't have the, the innovative skill that you had earlier in life. But if you can kind of make this transition, you can find as much or maybe even more happiness. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, nobody likes to lose anything. Once we bank these skills through our hard work, man, it doesn't feel good. You got to, you know, the, the great uh, poet Dylan Thomas talked about rage, rage against the dying of the light. And we always rage against things that we're losing. And especially, by the way, strivers, hardworking people, the people who are watching the Blaze TV are making a lot with their lives. And when they work hard with personal responsibility and merit, which is a real thing, and they see something getting harder, like, no, 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 not on my watch. And they work harder. The key thing to remember is that your strengths change over the course of your life. And trust me on this. I've done the research on this, that, that you can get much greater success than you had early in life. You can dominate what you do later in life, but you got to jump from that first curve to the second. And this book is a handbook on how to do it step by step. I promise anybody who reads this book, I'm not going to leave it up to chance. It's not going to be mysterious. You're going to know exactly how to jump from one curve onto the other and get happier and more successful. You use the example because, you know, I'm, I feel that way. I, you know, I'm, I'm in my 40s, my mid 40s now. And I, I know at some point, you know, this is coming if it hasn't started already. I mean, people have been watching the show. Maybe it's sucked lately. Um, you know, but as you kind of go forward, you, you use that example of that, an athlete. 
And an athlete is forced to kind of deal with this reality a lot earlier in life. Everyone knows the athletic curve comes and goes really quickly. When you right. put it on that scale, I mean, everyone knows this is coming to them eventually, but we, I guess in other professions, we just fight it off mentally. We think that it, it's not going to hit us. Yeah, no, we all know that athletes can't keep going on and on and on. I mean, Tom Brady, even the great Tom Brady, who has, you know, has some weird pact, you know, <laughs> metaphysically was able to go on and on. But, but even he has, has to retire. But, and we know that because, you know, physical prowess declines after a certain point. But we all kind of think that mental prowess is not the same thing. You think like, no, 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 no. If I make my job, my, make my living as a lawyer or in sales or in data entry or as an air traffic controller or whatever, you know, whatever you happen to do that actually uses your brain, that pr predominantly uses your brain, that you can be able to go on and on and on and on until you lose your marbles when you're super old, if you do. That's not right. The structure of our brains changes. The prefrontal cortex of the brain, the big meaty lobes behind our, behind our foreheads, you know, that actually changes in structure and it gives you one set of skills early and one set of skills later. And the more you understand this, the more you're actually able to tap into this. You know, you're in your mid 40s for sure. You're, you're, you're gonna notice that it gets easier for you as a broadcaster, as a journalist, to actually talk about things in ways that people understand very, very clearly. That's your crystallized intelligence. And by the way, you know, if I had hair like you, huh, I could be president of the United States. So, so I hope you're not complaining too much. <laughs> no, I mean, I complain about tons of other things. The hair is at least mediocre. I'm fine with that. Oh, it's fantastic. Point. It's <laughs> beautiful. Are you kidding? <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's so I think people understand this, right, Arthur? Like, they, they, But like making the leap is, is, is another story. Like actually deciding and embracing this is difficult. You talk in the book about, I think it was a female a CEO or a high achiever who said in a conversation with you that she'd rather be special than happy. And I thought that was a really revealing anecdote. I mean, are we prioritizing the wrong things? Yeah, for sure. And one of the things I talk a lot about in this book is one of the things that holds us back from letting things go and getting on the second curve is a success addiction. You know, it's funny, addictions all have one thing in common and that's dopamine. It's a, it's a neurotransmitter in the brain that hooks you on things, hooks you on gambling. It hooks you on, it can hook people on pornography and terrible things like awful things, you know, drugs, alcohol. And it's the same brain chemical that the same that'll get you hooked on anything. And one of the things that many people who are strivers who are working hard in their lives get hooked on is their success. Hit the lever, get the cookie, you know, get the kind of the, everybody says you're good when you're a kid, that you're a high achiever when you're a kid. So you hit the lever and hit the lever and you're working harder and harder. And when things get harder for you to get that success, you panic and you try to double down on your effort. These are success addicts and it, it, it chains you to that first curve as opposed to, to thinking, what do I really want in my life? What are the relationships that I actually need? I need to start throwing things away instead of actually accumulating more things, more relationships, more successes. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, I talk about this woman that I met, a big Wall Street financier who had had unbelievable fluid intelligence, incredible entrepreneurial success early on. And she was kind of starting to miss a beat. Now, most high achievers, that other people don't notice when they're missing a beat. The first tell is that you stop loving what you do. For the first time in a long time, you kind of burned out. You're like, ah, I really used to like this. I don't as much. That's a signal that your fluid intelligence is in decline. She said, yeah, I don't like it as much. And you know, other people are doing it better than me, but she didn't have good relationships. She, didn't, she wasn't actually ready for any other part of her life. And I said, well, why don't you do what you need to do? Step back from your business. You're rich, I said. She said, well, I guess I just prefer to be special than happy. And that's what all addicts say. That's what all workaholics say. That's what all alcoholics say, as a matter of fact, that, that they would, prefer, they would pr prefer to be high than happy. And, and we got to break that addiction. And the only thing that can is love in our lives. And so I talk an awful lot in this book about how to repair the relationship so that we can move from one curve to the other. So, Arthur, what's holding people back from doing this? I mean, it's, is it getting worse because of things like social media and, and everybody comparing themselves to each other? Yeah, for sure. That's absolutely the case. And there are a lot of people my age and your age that are stuck on social media, too. I can't, you know, any number of journalists and professors, you know, you get guys like you and me that are on Twitter all day long. It's, it's pathetic, as a matter of fact. But, you know, the truth is people are afraid. People are afraid to let things go. People are afraid to, to tell their friends, you know, that they're, they're going to try something new. They're afraid to actually go from the, the cowboy to the teacher, to, from the innovator to the instructor. They're, they're kind of, they're just, they're not quite sure that maybe that, that, that curve doesn't exist. They're afraid that they'll lose a little bit of prestige, that they'll lose the admiration of other people. Maybe they won't be as rich. Maybe they won't be as, as powerful as they used to be. But, but look, we deserve to be happy. 
You know, we want to, We don't want to be like that guy on the plane telling his wife he might as well be dead because he's not getting the successes that he got in past decades. We deserve to be happier at 75 than we were at 25. And, and the guarantee is that we can do that. Each one of us can do that if we have the right practices, the right habits, and, and the right skills. It's really all about trying to find what's actually important, too, in your life and prioritizing those things as well. The book's great. Uh, Arthur Brooks, professor at the Harvard Kennedy School and author of the new book, From Strength to Strength, Finding Success, Happiness, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. It's available uh, right now, so don't miss it. Arthur, thanks so much for coming on the program. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you. Great to see you.